Good afternoon, class. Welcome to Nursing 101. This week we're going to go over Chapter 35, Nursing Diagnosis and Planning. This is Week 6, and last week we covered Nursing Assessment in Chapter 34. This week we're going to cover Nursing Diagnosis and Planning in Chapter 35. Nursing diagnosis is the second step of the nursing process. And nursing diagnoses are concise, clear, client-centered, and client-specific statements. It is a statement about the actual or potential health concerns of the client that can be managed through independent nursing interventions. It is an approved label that identifies the client's problems in nursing terminology, the data that you collect during your assessment is analyzed to obtain a nursing diagnosis, and client care is planned based on the problems or diagnoses identified. One of the duties of the RN is to make the nursing diagnoses. Practical and vocational nurses may not make nursing diagnoses. However, it is imperative all nurses understand the meaning of a nursing diagnosis and how it is used to plan and implement nursing care. Remember, the nursing diagnosis is the second step of the nursing process. So, um, the history of the nursing diagnosis, it is um, in 1973, there was um, nurse researchers and educators who formulated plans to standardize communication and categories of nursing care. Before this, it was kind of, it differed between hospitals and one hospital. Um, they, you know, with even within one hospital, nurses invented their own descriptions of nursing related concerns for clients. So in 1982, with the members from Canada and the United States, the group began, became the organization known as the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association, or NANDA. And then in 2002, the organization was revised and became NANDA International. So what is, um, it is, it standardized the nursing terminology that we use as a nursing tool for communication of clients' problems and concerns. So, um, you know, it is, um, they provide updated terminology and revised categories every couple of years. Subjective and objective data, which nurses use to collect, communicate effective nursing care for all types of client became more understandable as it was adapted by all nursing units at the various types of clinical facilities. And NANDA International's terminology is now the basis for accepted nursing diagnoses and is a required facet of nursing care by multiple accrediting agencies. So the nursing diagnosis is um, stated in terms of a problem, a statement approved by the NANDA International is etiologies and signs and symptoms. And like I said, NANDA International's terminology is a basis for accepted nursing diagnosis and is a required facet of nursing care by multiple accrediting agencies. And the subjective and objective data that we collect has become more understandable as it has been adapted by all nursing units at various types of facilities. And most healthcare facilities have their specific version of the current NANDA International. So um, the rationale for the use of NANDA is words and terms are the actual diagnostic labels on which the entire client-oriented nursing statement is built. This is on page 423, left column, first paragraph. The words, phrases, and or terms of NANDA's international nursing diagnoses 
are actually the diagnostic labels or categories on which an evidence-based client-oriented nursing diagnosis statement is built. And question, the NANDA international list is not really reliable because it changes every few years. It's because most healthcare facilities have their specific version of the current NANDA international posted in a central location or it's in the medical information system for all nurses to use. The list is updated every few years, but it remains a basic foundation of nursing diagnoses. So the purpose of a nursing diagnosis is to identify nursing priorities, direct nursing interventions to meet the client's high priority needs. It identifies the nursing care problem. So it's directing nursing interventions to meet the client's high priority needs. It also directs nursing interventions to meet the client's short-term and long-term goals. And it directs nursing interventions to meet the client's need for discharge planning, educational needs, or post-discharge follow-up. It, the purpose of the diagnosis is nurses are able to communicate in a common language. It integrates actions and goals between the nursing professionals and the healthcare team. It forms a process to evaluate the benefits of nursing care and provides assistance when determining the client's acuity level or the client's need for nursing care. You know, the nursing diagnosis, this is on page 423. You know, a diagnosis is based on the observations and data we collect. It suggests nursing actions or nursing interventions, and it recognizes the client's ability to set for self-care, to cope with specific problems, or to respond to existing or potential conditions. The diagnostic statement. It is a comprehensive diagnostic state, a comprehensive diagnostic statement, effective airway clearance. I said that wrong, sorry about that. Airway clearance ineffective, manifested by shortness of breath on exertion. Sometimes you will see instead of airway clearance ineffective, you will see ineffective airway clearance. The problem, it describes clearly and concisely a health problem a client is having, general label like airway clearance ineffective. Etiology, the cause of the problem, specific related factors such as excessive mucus or foreign body obstruction, So um, it may be physiologic, pathophysiologic, psychological, sociologic, spiritual, or environmental. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms that summarizes the data we collected during our assessment. It is specific, defining characteristics such as shortness of breath on exertion. So um, they are specific events or issues that have developed from the basic etiology. So your diagnostic statement, it documents the problem. So your diagnostic statement is gonna have a problem, an etiology, and signs and symptoms. So a three-part diagnostic statement consist of the problem, etiology, and signs and symptoms, such as ineffective airway or ineffective airway clearance related to excessive mucus production as evidenced by shortness of breath on exertion. A two-part diagnostic statement consists of the problem and signs and symptoms, so it could be Airway clearance is ineffective as evidenced by shortness of breath on exertion. 
So like I said, the problem portion of the statement describes clearly and concisely a health problem a client is having. The nurse determines, you know, so, <clears throat> sorry about that. The nurse determines that one of the client's problems is difficulty breathing because her airway is filled with mucus. So following the NANDA international guidelines, she would write this statement, this problem, as ineffective airway clearance. The etiology is a part of the diagnostic statement that is the cause of the problem. Like I stated earlier, the etiology may be physiologic, pathophysiologic, psychological, sociologic, spiritual, or environmental. So, and then the signs and symptoms are, you know, the data that we collected during our nursing assessment. And that is the third part of the diagnostic statement. So question, is etiology always pathophysiologic? No, because it can be physiologic, pathophysiologic, psychological, sociological, spiritual, or environmental. So when you write the diagnostic statement, the diagnostic statement connects the problem, the etiology, and the symptoms. So the first two parts of the statement are linked by related to, sometimes abbreviated as r slash t, and the last two parts are linked by as evidenced by, and it is sometimes abbreviated as AEB. So an example of that would be ineffective airway clearance related to physiologic effects of pneumonia as evidenced by increased sputum, coughing, abnormal breath sounds, tachypnea, and dyspnea. I'm trying to turn a piece of paper here and it won't turn. So another example would be post-trauma response related to accident as evidenced by nightmares insomnia. So planning our care. Who is involved in with the ongoing planning of care? It is all health care team members. The planning is the development of goals to prevent, reduce, or eliminate problems and to identify nursing interventions that will assist clients in meeting these goals. We're going to set priorities. Remember Maslow's hierarchy. We're going to go from O2 to fluids to nutrition. Nursing diagnoses are ranked in the order of importance. Survival, safety, social, psychological needs. We have to set priorities and we always want our di diagnoses ranked in the order of importance. Establishing outcomes. The outcomes are also called goals or objectives. An expected outcome is measurable client behavior that indicates whether the person has achieved the expected benefit of nursing care. Our outcomes are client-oriented, specific, reasonable, and measurable. Remember, your outcomes or goal objectives, whatever you want to call it, have to be client-oriented, specific, reasonable, and measurable. So an example of that would be like, example, say they have a fever. Your expected outcome will would be, fee, you know, client's fever will reduce in two days. Um, let's see, oh. In short-term objectives, they help the client understand an expected outcome that can be met in a matter of hours or a few days. A long-term objective may be achieved after the client is discharged from the healthcare facility. So I'm going to give you an example here. 
Which one of these answers would be a measurable outcome? Intake of 2,500 mils over 24 hours. Client has moist mucous membranes. Client has good skin turgor. Client should drink more fluids. If you chose client's intake should be 20, will be 2,500 mils over 24 hours, that one is measurable because you have an amount to measure. So it would be client's intake will be 2,500 mils over 24 hours. And a question here, which of these objectives is a long-term objective for a client recovering from a fall? Remember, we're looking for a long-term objective. Walk around the room once a day, would that be long-term or short-term? Walk up and down the hall once per shift. Long-term, short-term. Participate in the college basketball tournament. Avoid use of bedpan and walk to the bathroom or walk around the hall for five minutes. It would be participate in the college basketball tournament because that is a long-term objective that the client ultimately hopes to achieve but which requires a longer period of time to accomplish. The other ones are short-term objectives that a client can reasonably meet in a matter of hours or a few days. Establishing a nursing care plan. Selecting nursing interventions or orders or actions. Activities that will most likely produce the desired outcomes, short-term or long-term. You can set specific target dates for achieving certain goals. Interventions are based on the scientific rationale or the reasons for using them. Writing a nursing care plan. It's formulated at a nursing care conference by the entire nursing team, it includes nursing diagnoses, expected outcomes, and nursing orders. Sometimes this is not done by the entire nursing team. It may be completed by the admitting RN. However, if you are doing a um, nursing care plan on a computer generated form, please do not check every box. Only check the boxes that pertain to your patient. Only check the boxes that are pertinent to your patient. Because remember, if you check every one of those boxes, you have to resolve that. You have to resolve that. And you will have to write something on that goal every time. So until it's resolved. So when you write that care plan, make sure it is pertinent to your patient. Like I said, the written care plan is kept in several different ways. Some can be handwritten, some are computerized. Documentation of a nursing care plan is a requirement of the Joint Commission, nursing home regulators, and Medicare. And care plans, a nursing care plan is, you know, it needs to exist within 12 to 24 hours of the client's admission. If the nursing care plan does not exist within 12 to 24 hours of the client's admission, the healthcare facility will be cited for non-compliance by the Joint Commission and penalties can be severe. Um, the other thing to remember is the ideal nursing care plan is individualized for each client. On page 427, at the bottom of the page, towards the bottom of the page on the right column is a key concept. Planning is the development of goals to prevent, reduce, or eliminate problems and to identify nursing interventions that will assist clients in meeting these goals. Remember the following steps involved in planning. Setting priorities, establishing expected outcomes, selecting nursing interventions, and then writing a care plan. 
I want you to know the steps and I want you to know the sequence of those steps. It's you set your priorities, establish your expected outcomes, select your nursing interventions, and then write your nursing care plan. And that is chapter 35. So I'm going to go over this again really quick of what I would like you to really pay attention to on page 422. Nursing diagnosis. Identifying the nursing care problem. And that is based on our analysis of our data. On page 423, the words, phrases, and or terms of Nanda's International Nursing Diagnoses are actually the diagnostic labels or categories on which an evidence-based client-oriented nursing diagnosis statement is built. And then on still on page 423, that know the difference between a medical diagnosis and a nursing diagnosis. And also on page 424, the nursing diagnosis serves the following specific purposes. It identifies nursing priorities, directs nursing interventions to meet the client's high priority needs. Remember the problem is a portion of the statement that describes clearly and concisely a health problem a client is having. The etiology is part of the diagnostic statement that is the cause of the problem. So that the etiology is the cause of the problem and the signs and symptoms are the data we collected during our nursing assessment. So there is a key concept on page 425, left column. Up towards the top, a nursing diagnosis has three components. Problem, etiology, signs, and symptoms. And then um, for just remember your planning, you set your priorities, establish expected outcomes, goals, objectives, select nursing interventions, and write a nursing care plan. And remember, the ideal nursing care plan is individualized for each and every client. You guys have a great week, and I will be doing Chapter 36 next week. Have a great week.